Okay. So, um, in the previous question, uh, began began working age uh, twenty five, and a deposit of two hundred and fifty dollars each month with an average APR of six percent compounded monthly gave us a nest egg of um, four nine seven eight seven three. Four nine seven eight seven three. Which I mean, we should have really rounded that to four. Actually, we should have rounded that to five hundred thousand. Like that's a half a million. Come on, like nobody knows what the interest rate's going to be over the next. Like when you're working for forty years, age twenty five to age sixty five. Anyway, so um. That's the side point. But but now we're looking at, okay, if you started working age 23, what would the nest egg be and how much more would it would it be? It would be more, we would assume, right? So um, so we need to, so we're, we're putting money in every month and it's going to add up to a final balance. And so that means the formula we're looking at is the balance after T deposits. So our balance after T deposits equals the deposit, which is 250, um, <clears throat> times one plus R to the power of T and all that. So so um, what's our rate? Well, our rate is 6%, but we divide that by 12 um, to get the monthly rate. So 0 0.06 over 12, right? 0 0.005. Now T is the number of deposits, and can you see that screen okay? Um, the number of deposits every month. And so let's think about this. We're going to work from age 23 to 65. Good golly. Um, you're not working too hard. 42. So that's 42 years of work, right? So we go 42 uh, times 12 to get the number of months of work that makes sense so we're working for um, 42 years 42 times 12 504 right so so that's the t that's the 504 months whereas previously was like you know in the previous question it was like 480 months because you were working for 40 years so previously was 40 times 12 does that make sense um, so, so that's our R. So it's one plus R to the power of um, T. Now this is a nice interest rate. I'm just going to write my one plus R like this: one point zero zero five to the power of um, T. I'm going to do the calculator power to the power of five hundred four, right? And then what's the rest of that formula? Then we subtract one. Okay. Then we subtract one. Now, I, I don't need to worry about parentheses and this because my calculator knows PEMDAS. It's going to know, hey, do the, do the inside here in the parentheses, do the exponent, and then subtract. Like, my calculator is not going to go, oh, 504 minus 1 is 503 because my calculators are pretty good when it comes to PEMDAS, right? So we're good there, right? <laughs> and anyway, that's all over, all divided by R, right? And um, we can just all divided by R. I'm just going to go, okay, all divided by R, 0 0.005. And again, my calculator knows to do, to go from left to right. Um, so, so it's going to just calculate this fine. If you really want to, you could put another parentheses here just to, to, to mark out the, to, to separate the, you know, to tell the calculator, to, hey, make sure you're doing the top of the fraction and then you're dividing by, you know, this. So you could be, you don't actually need these red parentheses. And, and I'll see you guys can like calculate the top and then calculate the bottom. I'll just calculate the top and then the bottom just, just to, in case anyone wants to do it step by step. But anyway, it's 250. And sometimes calculators want you to put a multiply by there, like times. You can do that if you want. Um, but you must have parentheses around this. 
like this, it has to be put that to the power of 504, then subtract one, and then multiply it by 250, right? So in any case, you need that parenthesis for sure. So 1.005 to the power of 504, and then subtract one, close parenthesis. So the top of the fraction should be that, uh, 2837.7. And the bottom of the fraction is just 0 0.005. So I've got that in my calculator. I'm just going to hit divide. And it will automatically go ANS divided by, and then I put 0 0.005, enter, right? So, so I should get 567540. Um, Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, so in other words, if I started work at age 23 and retired at 65, we'd have 567,000 um, instead of 500,000 in retirement, right? Um, either way, pretty awesome. By golly, if you've got a half million in retirement, you're good to go, right? I think I would say. Because, I mean, you guys remember, you got Social Security on top of that, right? Um Hopefully you've already paid off your house too, so that you're not paying rent, which goes up and up and up, because you pay off your house, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, uh, point is, what's the difference? Well, well, take the previous one, the 497873, and subtract. So take that and subtract the, the previous nest egg, the 497873, enter. And we get 69,667, 69,667. Okay. So that, that is the answer. It, it, this is the new, um, so, so, the, so the question was, what will be the size of your nest egg when you retire? If you start working age, start this retirement scheme age 23, the answer is that would be the amount. Um, and next up, compare this with the answer from 21. It will be $67,667 more than start working age 25, okay? But I, I, there's a couple of things I want to say about this. I need to talk about rounding. I mean, give me a break. They said 6% for, you know, 40 years or 42 years. Like, who knows that? You can't predict that into the future. Um, but if you look it up online, you'll find that the S&P 500, that's uh, the, you know, a standard kind of measurement of the stock market, has been at actually 6.8% for the last 50 years. Um, uh, for the last 50 years. And that's adjusted uh, for inflation. Because as you all know, the value of the dollar usually goes down each year, right? A little bit, because we keep making more dollars, right? We either make them appear on a screen or we print them off. Um, so, so, so the S&P 500 has actually been been 10.9% uh, 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 in dollar return, and if you just if you take away the inflation, it's about 6.8%. So, 6% in this example is is kind of a good good number. I would use 7%. Uh, just just to give you a feel for what it's really like out there in the real world. But again, who knows what's going to happen into the future? Maybe the whole world, the stock market will just go away or who knows what. I don't know. Anyway, but the point is, all I want to say about this, another thing I want to say about this ex example is, why are we rounding to the nearest dollar? Come on, like this is all made up. Like the 6% is such a, uh, it's such a guess, right? So we should, so when we're talking about money in the future, we should always be rounding to things like half a million you know, and say this is about 70,000. That's what we should really say. It's about 70,000. You know, this is about 570K. And this one's about 500K. I mean, this is the type of, this is the type of rounding we should use for this type of problem, right? Because it's, it's talking about money, you know, in the future, like in the 2060s or whatever. Does that make sense? So... But it, it but it does show show how wow two just two extra years at the beginning earlier gives you way more money and that's because this that the the small amount of money that you put in 
age 23 to 25, that has been gathering compound interest all throughout your working life, right? Um, and and if, if, if you want a tip, if you can get, if you can just put 60,000 into a retirement, if you put 60,000 into retirement age 25, you'll probably end up with about uh, $1 million in today's dollars. That's even adjusting for inflation. So see, if you can get 60,000 into retirement age 25, you, you could get about a million dollars by the time you retire. That's pretty pretty awesome because that money is, is, is gathering compound interest you know, all throughout. Um, and, and if you, you guys can check this out, give, give yourself a interest rate of about, you know, seven or 8% and see what that comes out to. But, but 60,000 at age 25, if you retire at age 65, should have about a million dollars. Anyway. Okay.